How the Light Gets In is the Institute of Art and Ideas' unique festival, combining days full of talks and debates in philosophy, politics, arts and science, with evenings full of music and dance. Get your tickets for the world's largest music and philosophy festival at howthelightgetsin.org. The theme of the debate is to take a look at selfie culture. There's been a lot of dialogue and discourse around our obsessions with the selfie and why have we become so sort of focused on ourselves and so determined to document and report every last aspect of our daily existence. Um, to discuss this uh, fascinating and uh, very relevant subject today, we have the amazing Helen Lederer, who some of you may know from her appearances on BBC's Absolutely Fabulous. Uh, then we have Shahida Bari, uh, academic and broadcaster. You can hear her often on the radio presenting Front Row and Free Thinking. Uh, on my left, we have Steve Taylor, a professor of psychology, no less, at Leeds University, who will hopefully be able to uh, offer a slightly more spiritual take on the, uh, on the cult of the selfie. And very finally, but not by any means last, uh, Suzanne Babai, I think I got that right, uh, who is an art historian and curator specialising in the art of Iran and Islam. So, starting with Helen, uh, narcissism or self-obsession, is it an effective life strategy? Good, I'm glad to go first. So, um, <laughs> narcissism, and I'm sure the uh, panel uh, will know more about um, the detail of narcissism, but I, my understanding is that it is actually... Uh, quite literally a condition that may be less common uh, than uh, the millennials who um, are attracted to self-expression in what is the conventional norm of our society by um, replicating themselves in various ways. Like we've moved on from posing in front of the Eiffel Tower. Of course, we do hundreds and hundreds. There's a limitless uh, the amount of photographs we can take. So narcissism, I think, probably serves um, great artists in that they are free from um, comparing themselves to limits. Um, again, I'm not an expert, but Picasso, um, uh, charismatic leaders, are pro uh, I don't know about if Trump isn't here, businessman, I don't know. But, um, <laughs> you know, um, narcissism serves certain people and we would be uh, lesser off if we didn't have great works of art from genius people who are able to be to think that they are the, they really are the most interesting person in the world which i find rather amusing i think that's really funny because it's like a genuine belief so there's no doubt and i think in society what is useful for us to function in a socialized way is to have the ability to have humility, to have some kind of self-doubt. And when Tony Blair, you could say, is a was a charismatic leader. Um, so I think it serves us. Um, I was, we were talking in the green room thinking, what are we going to say? Um, and um, <laughs> um, and I, I remember an, an audition kind of thing um, in America where if you, if you are modest, um, as my upbringing is, I was brought up to be polite and not boast. Showing off boasting is a problem. Um, I played myself down in a, a way that I thought was appealing, and of course I didn't get the job, um, because uh, t we are all car salesmen at, at some uh, level, we can't avoid that, and we have to sell our wares, and there's nothing dirty about it. Preening is bad, self-belief is essential, narcissism is repellent. So I think I probably sit in the middle of all those things in order to be egotistically driving myself forward in my present, my only very small presence on Twitter. I don't really understand it, but I kind of <laughs> do it because if I didn't do it, I wouldn't be serving my better good. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, oh. <laughs> Round of, a, of applause for your better good. Uh, Shahida. I was going to talk about the Carly Simon song. I think we should have come in with your Sylvain playing in the background, right? <laughs> but the thing about that song, <laughs> the thing about that song, if you've ever listened to the lyrics, is that she rhymes um, apricot with gavotte. Apricot, gavotte, and yacht, um, which is probably the first time in history that, in the English language, that anybody's ever done that. Um, 
And I, um, I'm making fun of it because I'm trying to point out that there's something more interesting in that song. And I would suggest to you that there's something much more interesting in the idea of narcissism. And we might start to talk quite technically about distinguishing between vanity, narcissism, and self-consciousness. Uh, I don't necessarily think that's productive. What I want to say to you as, as a philosopher is that it seems to me that narcissism is only a version. It's a version of the self-consciousness that philosophy has directed to us for centuries. And it's not always about appearance, it seems to me, narcissism. Although, to my, I, I, I've just written a book about dress, about the philosophy of dress, and actually appearance is, to me, infinitely interesting and complex. And in fact, I'm looking out at you, and you look like infinitely interesting and complex and alluring people to me. Um, so it's not just about appearance, and appearance is important. For me, narcissism or self-consciousness is also about how you care for the self care for the self, and that it's about acts of self-engagement that can be thoughtful, they can be ironic, they can be knowing, they can be profound. And I've got two main points, really, that I want to just cover very quickly, and I'll try and talk about it more in conversation with you guys. One is that um, seeing yourself and attending to yourself is a really important and complicated philosophical strategy. So narcissism, we think, is this process by which we watch ourselves. And often we think that we, we're vigilant, we self-regulate, and we assess and measure our appearance in the world, not only against ideals of beauty and propriety, should you wear wellies in this weather, et cetera, et cetera, but also in relationship to age. I think that more and more. My, I'm going to turn 38 on Monday. If you see me, say happy birthday. Um, <laughs> but reflecting on our appearance is one way that we are forced to confront our everyday attrition, the fact that we're dying at every given moment, at any minute, right? Heidegger says, at every moment at en and at any instant we are dying. And we're compelled to acknowledge our mortality when we see our bodies, when we see our bodies as these mutable things that are not within the limits of our control. And that is absolute agony <laughs> for someone about to turn 38. But it is also, it's also a vulnerability. It's a vulnerability that we share with others. And as soon as we start to extend our imagination to the possibility of other people having the same thoughts and self-consciousness as us, then we form the basis of an ethical relationship. And so when you look in the mirror and you lament your fluctuating weight or your thinning hair, I'm not looking at anyone in particular, <laughs> or your tired skin, the kindness that we cannot permit ourselves in those moments, we might extend more sympathetically to others with the understanding of our own imperfections. So to my mind, self-consciousness that comes of a certain kind of narcissism is a really important strategy for thinking about other people. And it's a philosophical strategy. The second thing I want to say um, is that we we're, we're very used to, to, we're accustomed to this idea of a kind of contract-based culture of modern rights and responsibilities, whereby we reciprocally abide by laws and regulations. And I think there's another way to think about how that version of civic society is not just predicated on a contract, it's predicated on ideas of self-cultivation. And that's not far removed from narcissism. And what I mean by that is something the Greeks talk about. They talk about caring for the self. Um, uh, and the, the philosopher, one of the philosophers that I love most of all, um, takes up that challenge in the 20th century. That's Michel Foucault, the, the French philosopher, um, who uh, is ravaged by HIV. By, uh, he dies of an AIDS-related illness in the 80s. And his, his body is pitilessly ravaged by illness, although he carries on wearing these amazing leather jackets and really cool bottle-top glasses. Um, but he says self-care can take so many different forms. He says um, writing, reading, eating, exercising, but also training oneself to be a citizen, being committed to a community. To take care of oneself is to attend with great concern to every aspect of one's being, taking pains with one's holding and with one's health alike. And that seems to be such a powerful way to be in the world. And so that's sort of what I want to end with, this idea that we have to, it's really important to be able to see ourselves, both literally and metaphorically, and we have to find some way of holding a mirror up to ourselves, to hold ourselves up for inspection. And that is the work of philosophy. Thank you, Shahida. Uh, 
Let me just tell you, 38 is not that bad. <laughs> um, not if you look like uh, Serena Kaczynski. Oh, I'm fine. Or Shahida Barak. <laughs> uh, moving on, Steve. Uh, well, I would agree that um, uh, self-care is important. Um, but I think narcissism is a kind of distortion of self-care. It's a kind of like a, an extreme version of self-care where the self becomes too important. Get your tickets for the world's largest music and philosophy festival at howthelightgetsin.org.